Alright, what is going on guys? Uh, this is another commentary video to accompany the Duna SSTO cinematic thing that I just uploaded. So if you haven't seen that, then I recommend that you go and watch that first. It's only about four minutes long and it's quite, it's quite entertaining I think. So there's a link on screen now that will open up in a new window. So you can go and watch that and have a, have a, have a grand old, a grand old time watching it. But uh, this is probably the most requested video I've ever had, which was um, to have a Duna SSTO. And I've had one for a while, I've always kind of teased it saying I've had this one for a while. But um, it was only like a crappy little one man thing, and he used the Mark II space plane parts, and it was pretty small, it only had one nuke. And I thought, that's kind of been done now, there's a few sort of floating around on the internet. Uh, I've seen about three videos, I think, of SSTO to that, so it's still quite rare, so it would still be quite a good video, but I thought, let's go one step further and do something that's bigger than, to my knowledge, anyone else has done in 1.0. Probably gonna regret saying that now, uh, without mining that is, so I didn't want to do it with a mining rig, because it kind of feels a bit like cheating, really, because, um, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I wanted to do it sort of on its own, off its own back, um, be able to do it without having to rely on uh, a refinery on board or anything. So let's talk about the flies. You can see it kind of flies a bit like a cow really. You have to pitch up at about 18 degrees and just hold it for about 15 minutes whilst it gets up to 110 kilometers. 110,000, yeah, 111 kilometers, obviously. <laughs> 11 kilometers. And then nose down to about 95 or low if you need to to get enough speed. Pitch up at about 15, 20 degrees till you get to about 170 and then ultimately to sort of level out to get as much speed as you can firing those nuclear engines up at about 20 kilometers uh, because at that point the specific impulse is almost exactly the same as in a vacuum and then you just sort of nose up to about 25 degrees and then you just sort of hold it there until the rapiers flame out and as soon as they do because there's only a small amount of oxidizer on board this plane you really have to nose up hard as soon as you can the reason you don't see me doing it immediately in this video is because it literally, the ship just can't nose up because it's too front heavy and those uh, canard things at the front just can't do it a lot because the atmosphere is too thin. So uh, yeah, but you want to try and pitch up as, fa as high as possible because you're basically relying on the nuclear engines to circularize and they don't really have that much thrust. That's why there's four of them on this plane just to give it enough thrust to weight ratio that you can actually use the nukes. Uh, for circularizing and also for taking off on Juna because Juna has no oxygen in its atmosphere. I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> so you have to use um, rocket engines to take off. Uh, so yeah, basically I wanted to try and leave this video completely uncut uh, aside from a few sort of places where I forgot to hit record recording fraps or just errors that took way too long and I don't think you'd really want to watch so for the most part this is pretty much uncut so you will see some mistakes you'll see me quick saving a lot and uh, yeah it should be quite a fun a fun little ride and uh, along the way I can give you some hints on how to make your own SSTOs so wow doesn't that sound exciting <laughs> <laughs> this is so lame. Alright, so here we are, we're circularizing here. I actually made a bit of an error here because what you'd normally do is um, on a long interplanetary burn like this with nuclear engines, you kind of do your burn over the course of two orbits, if that makes sense. So you burn, say you have to do an eight minute long burn, you'd burn, you'd make get to the maneuver node, burn for four minutes, then go around your orbit again, then come back and do the next four minutes, if that makes sense. It's just more efficient because you're burning more at periaps. And burning at periaps is the single most efficient place to burn. But um, I didn't really bother, A, because I couldn't be asked, and uh, B, this thing actually has more than enough Delta V for Juno with some mistakes, because I originally designed it uh, to get to the dual system, hopefully as a lathe SSTO or a BOP SSTO. The original plan for this video was to be to go into BOP, but I thought, eh, people will seem to be requesting Juno SSTOs a lot, and it's just a lot easier to do Juno SSTO anyway, so let's just do a Juno SSTO instead. So that's what you got. But uh, yes, you have to be careful sometimes, like when I was burning towards Juno, you probably saw I dipped right into the Kerbin atmosphere, uh, probably about 50, 50 kilometers. so yeah, I was alright, I managed to escape, but I was really on the borderline there. But here we are approaching Juno now, and is it Duna or Duna? I never know. But, um, <laughs> I would imagine it like Duna, you know, like, like a tuna fish maybe, I don't know. But here we are just approaching uh, Duna, that was a weird tangent wasn't it? Approaching Juno now, so I like to open up the air brakes and deploy the air 
open up the air intakes and deploy the air brakes to really help slow yourself down and pump all that fuel in the big long tank at the front towards the back so we can get a bit more control. And um, yeah, nice quick little cinematic shot there. And yeah, you really want to try and aim somewhere to be quite flat because it's quite hard to land, especially a big SS2 like this. They're quite flimsy and I had to use struts a bit and I don't like using struts on space planes because struts themselves create a lot of drag. Um, but yeah, here we are just coming into land. So basically when you're trying to design SS2 like this, you always want to use the shot cones. You never want to use um, the ram intakes because although on paper the ram intakes provide more air, uh, they provide, they create more drag, well, that's the first of many crashes that you're about to see. Uh, they create a lot more drag and they don't provide air for as long, if that makes sense. Like, uh, shot cones don't give you as much air, but they have way less drag so you can fly faster. And they provide air to a, high, to a higher altitude. Uh, the same thing goes for the structural intakes, you know, the really skinny ones. Uh, so that's the advantage there. So. Sure, there can't be that many more accidents now. I think this is a crash here. Oh, no, no, we did it. Look at that. Uh, so yeah, I probably should have used drogue shoots really, to be honest, for that. But whatever, it seems to work fine. So why, why fix what isn't broken, really? So here we are. This is the part of the video. I'm sure you remember where we get the drill out. I actually am starting to regret using a drill as the prop where you have to mine ore because although it's not happened yet, and it probably won't, I'll probably I might get people claiming that oh, there was a a refinery offset into the fuselage somewhere and you were just using this as a, a ploy or whatever but that's not the case. I mean you couldn't see the levels of the liquid fuel stay the same throughout all of this so yeah that, that is all I have to say on that matter. So here I'm just sort of faffing around, it's sped up quite a bit here just trying to get a nice beauty shot for the thumbnail and here we go so this was the first attempt at taking off trying to get us a bit of speed on the downhill but in the end yeah, usually you want to take up when you're on a place without an atmosphere. If it's somewhere like Minmus or Gilly, you can just get up because the gravity is so low. But when you're talking things like Duna or things like the Mun, you kind of have to use some sort of ramp to try and get yourself up. And I didn't really park near any <laughs> park, I didn't land near any mountains, so I kind of have to use these sort of little dunes uh, in the rock. So it was a bit of a precarious takeoff. Do I do it here? No. There was quite a few takeoffs. This was probably the um trickiest part to nail down but uh, yeah oh 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 do I no uh, so it must be the next one I managed to do it on but uh, yeah for those of you that weren't aware uh, you can't actually use jets on Juna so that's why I'm using nukes and that's why it's quite important to get quite a lot of nuclear I don't know why I reset there you have to get quite a lot of nuclear engines on big spacecraft for this purpose um, this was probably about the 10th uh, redesign of a large Juno SSD I had. I uh, made a couple that um, didn't use Mark III parts, they used the big sort of orange tank diameter, so is that 3.75 meters? I don't know, and then it had a science lab for the crew. But um, they only had, that only had two nuclear engines and the whole thing was very flimsy because it was all just sort of cylinders stuck to each other, if that makes sense. It's really hard to describe. <laughs> Let's just not go in there. I went through a lot of redesigns and redesigns and redesigns before finally settling on this. So I think my biggest tips for when you're designing SSDO is that a lot of the sort of precursors to this design were way more complicated. There was all these different sections and they were much more aesthetically pleasing and unique looking if that makes sense. But uh, ultimately they were just more prone to fail, that they were really wobbly, they were unstable when they landed. I just skipped ahead here because I was going to fast forward to a transfer window there. But yeah, they're really wobbly, really unstable, really unpredictable as well. And <sighs> they're just it's just complicated and needlessly needlessly complicated. So I think the best advice I can give is just to keep things as simple as you possible. That was my phone. Basically, the best thing I can say is to just keep it uh, as simple as possible. And uh, actually, that's it. Yeah, just keep it as simple as possible. So here, actually, I did a um, dress rehearsal run of this mission before I actually uploaded it, just to make sure all the plane worked and everything. So I'd already done this mission before. And on the previous attempt, I actually had almost enough fuel to get to Ike. Uh, I was down about 400 units of liquid fuel. So if you are attempting this, you viewers at home are attempting this, and you've downloaded the craft file, you probably, you probably, if you're, if you get an efficient enough flight plan, you'll probably be able to get to Ike and Duna, and then back to Kerbin without having to bother refueling or anything. So there you go. That's my. Um, oh, there you go. The gauntlet has been thrown down. If you can do that, then. Let me know in the comments because I will be 
I will be impressed. I will be very impressed. Uh, impressed at you and impressed at myself that I managed to make an SST, but mainly impressed with you. That's not get too arrogant here. <laughs> so here we are coming up to Kirby and getting our final run and yeah the mission's pretty much wrapping up now. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another one after this. I think it seemed like a good idea at the time but ultimately it feels like I'm sort of restricting the kind of videos I can do. Like there was a couple of reddit challenges like the pork barrel challenge or pork jet, I can't even remember what it's called. Pork jet challenge but um, just, you can't write that into a video really so Oh yeah, here's the, I cut this out of the video, funnily enough, but uh, yeah, I spun out of control because I'd pumped too much fuel into the back. And there's an explosion there that you just saw, but I had a look at the plane when I landed and everything was there, there was nothing missing. So I've no idea what that exploded part was, so if you got, if any investigators out there want to try and figure out, you can see me just looking around the plane trying to find it, yeah. If you guys can give me a suggestion about what might have exploded there, then do let me know. But um, to my knowledge, nothing actually exploded on it, so I decided to keep it in. So here we are, making our final descent. I'm massively undershot here, but I've got quite a lot of liquid fuel left. So, we're fine. A lot of people ask me when designing SSTOs what's kind of the ratio they want for like jets, rapiers, and nuclear engines. And there isn't really an answer, to be honest. I think for mun SSTO, I mean, min miss SSTOs, you can get away with two rapiers and a nuclear engine. That's all you really need. Uh, a MUN SSTO, you probably need about probably about four to six ion engines, ion engines, uh, rapier engines with maybe two nuclear engines. This is assuming a small size. For a size like this SSTO, you'll probably want to just this kind of setup really. So if you're making big ones, a good thing I found is just having the one whiplash jet, maybe two at the back, with eight rapiers minimum and four nuclear engines minimum. Maybe you could get away with three nuclear engines, but it's quite hard to work out the symmetry for that. So, yeah, here we are coming into land. I messed up again. <laughs> yeah, went into a store, so I have to sort of accelerate again. Uh, some of you might be wondering why there's those nose cones on top of the rapiers. This might be a bug that's fixed now, I don't know, but it used to be that rapiers were more aerodynamic if you um, put the nose cones on the back. I think in the end, this thing doesn't actually need those nose cones because it has so much excess liquid fuel that it's not really an issue that it might waste a bit more on the ascent without those nose cones but whatever wow I'm really bad at piloting aren't I wow <laughs> but yeah here we are. it was quite hard to aim for the runway to be fair because usually I plant a flag at the end of the runway so I can aim for it but um, I haven't on this save file and also it's night time which really doesn't help either but yeah you can see from this video just how often I quick save it's almost a bit excessive how often I quick save but um, I get bored quite quickly. I think I have KSB ADHD, so... <laughs> uh, but here we are, yeah, final quick save I think there. Coming into land, uh, really awful landing there, but I managed to make it down okay, and there we are. That's the end of the flight, so like I say, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you're enjoying the series. It's not got many more episodes to go, I don't really want to make it outstay its welcome, so... Yeah, maybe two, maybe three episodes more, and then that should be a wrap. I've got an idea for another series coming up afterwards. Uh, not immediately but in the near future but yeah hope you enjoyed the video and uh, there's a link on screen now for the cinematic version of this again so yeah bye I just think a good way to end these commentaries